Fun activities for incidental vocabulary learning are really important because they engage students and they keep them motivated to continue to work in English. But remember, students need both incidental vocabulary learning and intentional vocabulary learning. And it's usually our job as teachers to remind them of that. Professor Rinaldi has already provided some useful concepts about vocabulary. I asked him specifically for some ideas about how to teach vocabulary, and here's what he said. What advice do you have for teachers about teaching vocabulary? The best advice I can give to teachers about teaching vocabulary is to first familiarize yourself with all the aspects of, of word knowledge beyond basic meaning that are important for accurate and appropriate use. I'm talking about things like collocation. So words co-occurring with other words. So for example, in English we say take medicine instead of eat medicine, which would, which would be the more likely translation in many languages. Knowing a word means knowing what other words typically go together with that word. Another aspect of word meaning is register. Register has to do with the typical contexts, the social context, the, the usage contexts of particular words. So for example, a student should know that the words friendly and gregarious, although they're very similar in meaning, are used in different contexts. We could use the f word, we could use the word friendly to describe someone in casual conversation, but the word gregarious is, is more formal, it's much less common, and so it, it would sound weird in, in conversation, but it would be okay in, in some types of writing. Another aspect of word knowledge is the spoken and written form. So in other words, how a word is spelled and how it's pronounced. All of these things are important for students to be aware of because they help us to use words the right way. And yet, as I said, most students still think vocabulary learning lear means learning the meanings of words. And so they neglect these other aspects of word knowledge. So, so as a teacher, if you can first make sure your students are aware of these other aspects of word knowledge, what they are and why they matter, that's a big part of it. And then the teacher can also help by consistently and frequently pointing out these other aspects of word knowledge when introducing new vocabulary in class. So when planning your teaching of vocabulary, try to anticipate what students may find challenging about a word in terms of usage and teach to that. So for example, if you're teaching the word medicine to a group of beginners and you know in their native language they say the equivalent of eat medicine, you know, that's an acceptable collocation in their native language, you can head off potential errors by pointing out that in English these two words aren't used together and instead we say take medicine to mean the same thing. I think that kind of awareness raising and that kind of targeted teaching is one of the best ways that teachers can, help, can help their students come to grips with the vocabulary of English. One of the most important things that Professor Rinaldi pointed out is that there is more to vocabulary than word meaning. Students need to learn all the aspects of word knowledge, collocation, register, written and spoken form. In other words, students need to learn how words are used with what words they are used, on what occasions they are used, and whether they are, will be used predominantly in writing or speaking or both. Professor Rinaldi gave us some examples of collocation of words that go together. He pointed out that in English we say that we can take medicine, but we eat lunch. We take medicine rather than eating medicine. In English, you just don't say, eat medicine, even though you do eat it. We eat lunch, and in English, we don't say, take lunch. That just doesn't sound like English. If you say you're going to take lunch, I might think, take it where? Teaching vocabulary includes teaching words that go together.